All right, let's get right to it. A lot of headlines. A to lot to. to talk about today. Donald Trump and his campaign are fighting back against a number of stories that came out late yesterday accusing Trump of unwanted and inappropriate touching. The New York Times released an article yesterday that features the allegations of two women. Rachel Crooks tells the paper she was a 22-year-old receptionist working for a real estate group in Trump Tower in New York when she met Trump one morning in 2005. She says they shook hands and then Trump kissed her on the cheeks before kissing her directly on the mouth. In the case of Jessica Leeds, she told the Times she met Trump 35 years ago while sitting in first class on a flight. She accuses him of touching her after the dinner trays were cleared and that she got upset when he put her hand up her skirt. Both women say they support Hillary Clinton. And Leeds says she hopes her story makes a difference in the election. NBC News has not confirmed the allegations. The Trump campaign told NBC News the article was fiction and it trivialized sexual assault. Trump's lawyer went even further, sending a letter to the executive editor of the paper demanding a retraction and apology, calling the report reckless, defamatory, and constitutes libel, per se. And Jason Miller, Trump's senior communications advisor, said in a statement, in part, quote, this entire article is fiction. And for the New York Times to launch a completely false, coordinated character assassination against Mr. Trump on a topic like this is dangerous. To reach back decades in an attempt to smear Mr. Trump trivializes sexual assault, and it sets a new low for where the media is willing to go in its efforts to determine this election. Election. It is absurd to think that one of the most recognizable business leaders on the planet with a strong record of empowering women in his companies would do the things alleged in this story. And for this to only become public decades later in the final month of a campaign for president should say it all. Mika, what do you think? I think that it's the stories, I guess, speak for themselves at this point. We, NBC News hasn't done its gotten its own sources sourcing on it mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything yet I don't I don't know I I do think that this is going to get so ugly but, if we thought it was ugly now well, that's what Josh Green actually has written about uh, Donald Trump believes uh, you know that um, he's going to spend the next couple of weeks doing this R why don't we talk about what Josh Green's reporting okay um Donald Trump believes that his gambit to invite three women who claimed they were assaulted by former there President Bill Clinton to last Sunday's debate has not only left his Democratic opponent shaken, but has also helped unite Republican voters. According to a report by Bloomberg's Joshua Green, Trump will double down on this strategy, which the campaign believes will make Hillary Clinton toxic and weaken voter turnout for her among young women. According to a senior Trump advisor, the campaign will soon bring forward new accusers. Women are coming to us who have been groped or sexually abused by Bill Clinton. The campaign is also debating whether to feature these latest accusers at campaign rallies, according to Green. The Republican nominee's decision to close out his campaign by attacking what he alleges to be Bill Clinton's history of sexual violence and his wife's role after the fact suggests the next few weeks could be among the ugliest in modern presidential history. Trump strategists claim new accusers have come forward after seeing the recent media coverage. The plan to increase the focus on sexual misconduct is being spearheaded by Trump campaign CEO Stephen Bannon, deputy campaign manager David Bossy, and Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Bill Clinton has long, denied, has long denied past allegations of misconduct and has never been charged for alleged crimes by the women <clears throat> Trump featured at the debate. He did pay an $850,000 settlement to Paula Jones with no admission of wrongdoing. With the prospect of additional Clinton victims coming forward, a Trump advisor said, we're going to go buck wild. He also was disbarred by the United States Supreme Court and I think the Arkansas Supreme Court for lying under oath during a sexual harassment lawsuit. Uh, you, what were you going to say, Mike? I, I was, I was going to ask Mika if, if she believes the woman who came forward to the Times. Do you think their memory has any credibility? Uh, I, I don't think it's about me believing. I, I think it's, you well, know, Let me ask you a different question. Would you 
would you remember something that happened like the alleged actions are charged to have occurred if it happened to you 35 years ago? Yes, I would. And I actually I think um, spent them, a lot of time in you? Washington and I've had experiences know, like that with very you. powerful people in Washington. And that's, actually, that's you know, some of them you. that were. Some people, actually, ironically, Meek has had experiences with some people who right now are going out and being very self righteous and with leaders of news organizations that are going out being very self righteous. Uh, and by journalistic guides who are being very self-righteous well, over the past several weeks look, about what's been going on, she has had misconduct. I, I think mean, that... I mean, come on. I, I just... Look, I would just say that there are, um, first of all, contemporaneous people in these, in these accusers' families who they've talked to about it at the time. Right. Um, and we spoke to them for the story. The New York Times spoke to them. Uh, you, know, you can read in the story the steps that were taken to verify the accounts. I will say... There are now a great number of these accounts and accusations over many years from different people. Right. And we are seeing a pattern to all of them. It's right. the forcible kissing. It's moving into the room and then making a sudden move. Right. Um, we see it again and again. He described the same it in types of fax patterns. Right? right. Well, he's admitted it himself to Howard yeah. Stern. Exactly. When also on a uh, tape Billy Bush, it fits what he said he did to Billy Bush. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, I so, just kissed them. So what is the impact of that? Does that make him unqualified to be president of the United States? It's for the voters to decide, not for me. Um, mm -hmm. I think it raises a real you know, question about his character that people are going to evaluate. Right. Look, if they want to bring up allegations against Bill Clinton, I'll think that's unfair or, or out of bounds. But he is not running for president, ultimately. No, Hillary no. Clinton is. This, the, I think this also, as Nick touched on, is the culmination of six days, which started on that Access Hollywood bus, where he described almost this, using his star power and being allowed, he believed, to do things like grab women yeah. and to walk up to them and kiss them, which is exactly what a lot of these women are describing. We didn't even yet get into the first-person account from the People magazine writer, um, Natasha Stoinoff, mm -hmm. down at Mar-Lago in December 2005, where she describes Melania going going upstairs to change, Donald Trump suggesting he give a tour to this writer, closing the door behind her and pushing her against a wall and start kissing her. She goes on and on in, in some detail. It's a very disturbing account of what happened. I just think if we're going to believe the Bill Clinton accusers, doesn't the same rule apply to the Donald Trump accusers? If you're going to give Paula Jones and Juanita Broderick well, the benefit call, of the doubt, aren't yeah, you going to give these I call the Bill Clinton the accusers accusers, and I don't... You know, I'm, I'm not making a, a judgment on that at all. These are accusers. I will just say that um, for the young women that were very young at the time that this happened, I mean, I, I had experiences like that in Washington. I was a page on Capitol Hill. My parents prepared me yeah. for men like this, and there are many of them in Washington, in the media and in politics. And it's the girls who come in from town who don't have, who don't really know what's, that's the, that's the traumatic experience for them because they don't know how to handle it. And I, I believe these things could have happened. And I do. Because they happened to you. Well, right. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of men like this. And, and there are, there I know are two, them today. There are two things that are quite vivid in all, in all of these stories. One is what you just referenced. No woman, including right. you, you've just talked about it, yeah. forgets things like this. Oh, no. You don't forget things right. like this. The other aspect of it is really, at least to me, really interesting. The Bill Clinton accusers and the accusations made against him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if there were the power of social media that exists today, existing in 1992, he never would have been president. Oh, I don't never. know about that. I don't know about that. I, I remember in real time, because I was there, women who came forward with these type of accusations, and Mark Halpern, you'll remember this and very well. there are well, people who make it up. Came, women who came that. forward with accusations like this, and I have no reason to doubt any of these accusations whatsoever. I'm, I'm talking about, I remember in the 90s in real time, Bill Clinton's, it's hard to believe they did this, but Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's political apparatus dismissing these ladies as sluts and nuts, Christopher Hitchens reporting that Hillary Clinton, in fact, was in charge of the, quote, sluts and nuts operation. She headed it up to destroy women that came forward with these type of accusations. Um, James Carville uh, saying after uh, a sexual harassment claim where uh, that was settled, saying, well, I guess if you drag a dollar bill through a trailer park, no telling what will come up. Um, 
I guess that's what's so surprising to me that when we have people connected with the Clinton campaign being so shocked by what's going on here, I'm, I think we're all deeply disturbed by what's going on here, but I would only say to Hillary Clinton, you had me at nuclear winter. You should probably just leave this to the press. And, <laughs> and, and just please, we were all there in the 1990s and our memories are not that short. Uh, leave it to the media and stop being self-righteous about something that you know all too much about. But Mark Halpern, the Josh Green report suggests that we are now going to have a he said, she said on both sides over the last three weeks. Uh, is this any way to run a campaign? Is this any way to run a country? No. Well, you know, I've been covering campaigns since 88, and people always say, well, this is the most negative campaign we've ever seen. We're, we're, we're now in the most negative campaign I've ever seen. Yep. And Donald Trump's behind, right? He's behind. His campaign will acknowledge he's behind. And they recognize their options are limited in terms of how they can come back. And it is, is extraordinary that in the midst of an attempt to come back, they're turning increasingly, as Josh Green reports, to going after Bill Clinton's past at a time when Donald Trump's past is now going to be scrutinized more than it ever has. It, there are a lot of extraordinary things about what's happening now. The difficulty of the press and, and any allegation on any topic that comes up in the last month is, is a challenge for the press to handle with. I thought the Times handled this very responsibly. I don't think there's any chance Donald Trump will sue, despite the threat. And the issue now, going forward, I think, is how are all of these claims, including the, the, the allegations and the, and the implications of the WikiLeaks documents, how is all this going to be handled? I can tell you this, I'm not going to talk a lot about housing or health care or foreign policy. This is going to crowd out everything for the everything. foreseeable future. And I'll say again, Donald Trump's behind in this race. I was with him yesterday in Florida. He, he actually, I thought, was pretty good at trying to be on message, but it's not going to be on message for a good long while in dealing with these allegations. You know, these the floodgates may have opened on these yeah. claims for women anyway, but his answer to Anderson Cooper at the debate the other night, when Anderson asked him pointedly, he said, so does this mean, when you deny this, does it mean that you've never forcibly kissed a woman? And he said, quote, I have not. To a woman, as you read all these stories last night, each of them said they were watching the debate, they heard him say that, and they felt this was the time to come forward and tell their stories. Um, this may just be the beginning. This was one night where we got five women. Um, and then there's another story in the, in the Daily News, an uh, entertainment table. You find it fascinating about that, Willie, this ha some of these things happened 30 years ago, and they're all falling days before the election? Yeah, that's why, that a coincidence, that's why I say it may have happened anyway. I mean, this is obviously an oppo drop, but I do think his declaration at that debate that he had not done it yeah. mm -hmm. opened the floodgates. Really, yeah. I totally disagree. Really? I, I don't think you can call it an oppo drop. I think the Times makes pretty clear, as you just suggested, that a lot of the women who are coming forward now are coming forward in reaction to what he said to Anderson Cooper. An oppo drop suggests this is being coordinated by the Clinton campaign. I'm always skeptical when stuff comes up, as, as all reporters should be in voters. I, I, think, it, I think it's good to be skeptical when you have stories that are 30 years old that come out days before an election. So I think, Mark, that's actually a very good instinct on your part. I mean, we should be, we should be skeptical and, and question the not, timing. Not, but not in skeptical this case, of the stories. But, I'm, I'm not yeah. skeptical at all of the stories. Skeptical of the timing that all of this has dropped over the past five days days out from an election because doesn't it seem that a more appropriate time to drop these stories might have been after the first Republican debate when the front and center issue was how badly Donald Trump treats women. Megyn well, Kelly's yeah. first question in the first Republican debate was how horrifically Donald Trump treats women. Now, if this had happened to me 30 years ago, I would say this would be a really good time for me to come forward. Right. Well, I think I right. think all the I think all the I think all the Republican campaigns would ask themselves why this stuff didn't surface earlier, because uh, it may have stopped Donald Trump. What do you, uh, what do you think now. the answer? Um, just, why do you think the answer wait, to that is? Second. I, I don't let, think let, they had. Let me ask Mark I, this, and then you I, can I, answer. Yeah. What's that, Mark? Why do you think I, Why do you think it came out days before the election? 
I think it came out days before the election because of what he said, because of the Billy Bush uh, tape, the Access Hollywood tape, and because right. of what he said to Anderson Cooper. Uh, look, um, uh, we need to remain skeptical about the WikiLeaks process and the content. We need mm -hmm. to, and, and pursue that. We need to maintain skeptical about how this happened. I'm just objecting, and again, I'm not being critical. We're on live TV. I just think saying it oppo that it's somehow coordinated. Maybe it is, but there's no evidence of that. And if you look at how the New York Times says their account transpired, if you look at what the, New York, the People magazine reporter said, it's got nothing to do with oppo and coordination. It has to do with women feeling aggrieved and concerned and, and seeing what he said to Anderson Cooper right. and reacting right. to that. And what about what he said to Megyn Kelly? I, I'm, again, I'm just wondering what, what was the trigger well, the here? Kelly, the well, Megyn Kelly well, questions were about things he'd said, insulting well, things he'd said. Also treating women badly. This has yeah. been a, a recurring, recurring theme in media coverage for a year and a half that Donald Trump is a misogynist. By the way, you look at every Huffington Post story that they ever write about Donald Trump, at the bottom they say he is a misogynist. It seems to me, I don't think there's anything special about what he said to Anderson Cooper mm -hmm. versus what everybody's been accusing him of over the past year and a half, that it dropped days before the campaign yeah, in October. Two things. First of all, there have actually been a string of stories about this for months in multimedia outlets. There is a Boston Globe story, there's a New York Times story crossing the line. It was a big story. Five million people read it online of accounts of his behavior with women. Uh, there have been talks on beauty contestants. There have been any number of stories over the past four or five months. I couldn't say when the first one was. I do think that uh, Mark is right that the comments at that first debate were about insults to women and what was different now was him coming out and specifically denying what he had said on that tape with Billy Bush, <clears throat> which clearly uh, speaks uh, uh, to the experience some of these people had actually, that the, the exact thing he described doing to Billy Bush is what we are seeing in some of these stories. So I think it's, it's that thing making it happen. Look, let me, I want to, by the way, Mike, how were you in the 1990s uh, with Bill Clinton? Did you write columns condemning Bill Clinton's behavior in the 1990s? I did, actually. I, more, more his draft dodging. More his draft dodging than, than, than sexually his, harassing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Although I, I'm sorry, I, what were you going to say? I, I, I want to be... I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding the source of your skepticism. Skepticism is healthy. I Skep skepticism about what? About, not these women's stories. I'm not okay, skeptical that's, that's of the what women's I was stories. Ask you. That's what I was going to I'm ask skeptical you. about the okay. timing yeah. of all of this dropping. Talk about an October you, surprise when, again, as you said, there have been a thousand triggering events right. that would have made sense if I had been sexually harassed by this man. Uh, the Megyn Kelly story would have given me an opportunity. Uh, there, like you said, there have been a thousand of these reports already. I'm just asking why suddenly all of this stuff is blowing up in October. Perhaps it's all innocent. Perhaps there is no oppo drop. Perhaps it's not coordinated. I'm just saying, I think I'm only agreeing. Right. I'm only agreeing with Mark that. Halprin that we need to remain skeptical. Sure. And I have found over my 25 years uh, in, in public life, that being skeptical usually pays off in the end. Yeah. We will find out the truth about why these stories dropped, when they dropped, if anybody had anything to do with the timing of it outside of the New York Times. Uh, we will find that out in years to come. So I'm just saying skepticism's a good thing. This campaign, though, is really sinking uh, uh, to an extraordinarily low level. And we are now going to be having women put in front of the camera uh, by both sides now. And given the state of this country and given the state of our politics, it is really, really sad. Is there any chance that we can vote maybe tomorrow and end this thing? Just get it over I with. wish we could have voted like <laughs> six months really ago. Ugly. <laughs> We have some polls actually coming out yes. uh, in, in Pennsylvania, also uh, some polls coming out in uh, Missouri. Also, Mika, it's kind of uncomfortable when you say you're going to unendorse Donald Trump oh. and then you have to un unendorse him and come oh. back and support him. Now you like what I said the other day? if this is a scene out of Veep where now the staff is saying, 
you're going to have to unendorse him again. You're unendorse your unendorsement. Donald Trump's continued attack of the GOP establishment and the revelations out of the new WikiLeaks hack. Also joining us this morning, the Libertarian vice presidential nominee. Oh, thank nominee. God. Yeah, thank God. Thank God. My Former man. Governor Bill Wills Billy. is here My on man. Billy boy. Glad we're having Billy. Pally Jackson joins us with her latest reporting and how the Trump campaign is responding today. The Christian Broadcast Network's David Brody reacts to Mike Pence's lukewarm reception at Liberty University. And the Washington Post's Fred Hyatt with his paper's brand new endorsement in the presidential race. We'll be right back. You're watching Morning Joe.